The Jigga Prince is a new twist on an old favorite. It's basically a prince nymph tied on a jig hook with a slotted bead and a few minor modifications. Here, U.S. Youth Fly Fishing Team member and Pennsylvania fly fisherman Doug Freeman is going to tie one on a Hannock H400BL size 14 competition jig hook. Doug begins by placing a 3mm faceted gold tungsten bead onto the hook small hole first and then slides the bead right up to behind the hook eye. He then secures the assembly in the jaws of his tying vise. To stabilize the bead and to add weight, Doug uses .01 lead wire. After making about 15 wraps around the hook shank, he breaks the front end of the wire off close and then slides the wraps firmly up into the slot of the bead. While bracing the wraps, he then breaks off the excess wire at the back end. For thread, he's loaded a bobbin with a spool of UTC 70 denier in olive. Start your thread on the hook shank immediately behind the wire wraps and use the thread to further secure the wire to the hook shank. Continue taking thread wraps rearward to just before the start of the bend. You can then snip the tag end off close. Departing from the original Prince recipe, Doug uses Coke de Leon fibers rather than goose biots to form the tail. You're looking for fibers without a lot of web at their base and the stiffer and straighter the better. 4 to 5 is plenty. Preen the fibers perpendicular to the stem, and then while keeping their tips aligned, strip them free. Measure to form a tail about a hook shank in length, and secure the fibers to the hook with wraps of tying thread. You can then reach in with the tips of your tying scissors and snip the excess butt ends off close. Strip a single peacock curl free from the stem, and break or snip off its brittle tip. Tie in the tip right at the back edge of the lead wraps and secure it rearward all the way to the hook bend. Small gold ultrawire is used for the rib. A six inch length will make multiple flies. Lay the wire against the near side of the hook with one end extending forward to the lead wraps. Then take thread wraps to secure it. Butting both the wire and the peacock right against the back edge of the lead wraps really helps to smooth the transition. Continue taking wraps with your tying thread to build up a gently tapered underbody. End with your thread right at the back edge of the bead. Get hold of the peacock curl and start making touching wraps up the hook shank to build a nice fuzzy body on the fly. When you reach the bead, secure the hurl with a few wraps of tying thread and then break or snip the excess off close. Then, with the gold wire, make counter wraps over top of the hurl to segment and reinforce the body. Secure the wire with thread wraps at the back of the bead and finally, helicopter to break it off close. Dark brown hen hackle is used to suggest legs and add some movement to the pattern. Prep a single feather by stripping the lower fuzzy fibers free from the stem. Get hold of the feather by its tip and keep stripping away fibers until you're left with about an eighth of an inch on either side of the stem. While pinching the very tip of the feather with your right hand, preen the fibers down the stem with your left. This will expose the very tip and allow you to trim it to form a small triangular tie-in anchor. Place the anchor along the near side of the hook and take thread wraps to secure it behind the bead. With the stem held to vertical, gently preen the fibers rearward and start taking wraps with the stem around the hook shank. One and a half turns should be enough to evenly space fibers all around. Use your tying thread to bind the stem to the hook shank before snipping the excess off close with your tying scissors. Preen the fibers rearward and take a wrap or two behind the bead to produce a small landing pad for the next material. Strip two white goose biots free from the stem and while keeping their tips aligned, lay them on top of the thread landing pad so their tips extend almost to the back end of the body. You want them to display slightly outward in typical Prince Nymph fashion. Continue taking thread wraps to bind them down and then take a couple around just the hook shank behind the bead. 
While obscuring the camera's view with the thumb of your left hand, snip the excess butts of the goose biots off close. Then remove your thumb to show the results. Take another wrap or two to make absolutely sure the biots won't pull free. Natural gray squirrel dubbing is used to form the collar of the fly. You don't want to overdo it, but it should be nice and spiky and cover the thread wraps well. Once you're happy with the look of the collar, do a four or five turn whip finish, and after seating the knot firmly, snip your tying thread off close. Brush or preen the squirrel out if you need to, and your jigger prince is ready to fish. Yes, the fly will ride hook point up, but the white goose biots will still be plenty visible to trout as the fly moves bead head first downstream.